All right, everyone, if you have a question, go ahead and raise your hand, we'll get started. Go ahead, Chase. Scott, uh, first of all, what did uh, Russell have to leave the game with? Um, I think it was his ankle. And uh, as this game slipped away from you, what, what do you think were the biggest reasons they were able to pull ahead by so much? Well, they were they were attacking. They were getting a lot of high efficiency shots. They were making them, and then we were uh, couldn't make a bucket. We couldn't get any shot, timely shots. We couldn't make, couldn't hit any threes. The free throws were not falling for us. Uh, we didn't play well. We played well in spurts. But we knew Playing against this team, you can't you can't play well in spurts. You got to be able to sustain a lot of good basketball throughout the game. They got they, they got their starting lineup is powerful. They got a lot. They got a lot of weapons. So we did a fairly decent job on indeed, and still was eight for twelve with twenty two points. And Simmons and Harris they didn't miss many shots. They were getting they were getting some pretty good looks. Ava. Scott, I'm not sure if you've been made aware of the uh, situation when Russ was walking back to the locker room and it looked like a fan was dumped popcorn on him. Just what are your thoughts on that, I guess? Say it again, I didn't get the last part. Um, just when uh, uh, it looked like a fan dumped popcorn or threw popcorn or something at Russell as he was walking back to the locker room. No, I'm not, I'm not aware of that. I don't know. I haven't heard anything about that. If that's the case, it's uh, not good. Fans are throwing things at you. Um, very disrespectful. So it all feels better than that. That that, that did happen. Uh, if it did happen, hopefully the, the kid or the, the person banned from the league watching any games because that's it's unacceptable. They wouldn't do that down the street. It, it seemed like this game had a more physical edge kind of from the start. Um, you said you wanted your guys to play with more toughness going into this one. Where do you feel like you lost that a little bit? I thought I thought we did. I thought we did. I thought we had some opportunities to to score with them in that first quarter. I thought I thought it, defensively, you know, they made they made some good tough shots. Simmons was Simmons was um, getting opportunities, and like I said, Tobias and and indeed they're they're all they they got a lot of they made their shots. And, but I thought we had an opportunity to, to stay you know, much closer in that first quarter, but we still came out of that half, half only, I think, down 14. And then the, even with all the craziness that happened in the third quarter, we're still down 14. We just couldn't get any, we just couldn't get a couple of shots to fall in a row. You know, we're two for 22 from the three point line. We're not a, we haven't been a great three point shooting team, but we're not that bad. Yeah. Scott, they are, um, it doesn't seem like they're paying much attention at all to Howell right now. Um, and, you know, it's, it seems like it's difficult for him to kind of find any kind of rhythm and flow. I mean, I know you haven't looked at the tape yet, but with the size disadvantage you already have with Simmons at the one, I mean, is that an area where you maybe think about making a change or looking at something different? Yeah, I mean, everything. Everything's up and up for grabs right now. I mean, once we're going to look back, we've got a couple of days. We're going to look at the film, and um, you've been in enough playoff series. And you know, this is they're the, they're the number number one seed for a reason because they're they're really really talented. They're explosive. They're powerful in that starting lineup. But they did what they were supposed to do. Went on their home court. We got an opportunity to do that. All I told the guys is just when you've been in enough playoff series, they did what they did. Now it's our turn to to do what we what we need to do. And all we have to do is focus on winning game three, mm -hmm. bring all of our energy and enthusiasm. And nothing's been easy for us this year, and and to win a to win a game and to win a series is not going to be easy. But everything's definitely going to be looked at. We got to find we got to find uh, a better a better uh, better group on both ends of the floor. 
and whoever we choose, it's not going to be that person's fault, but we just got to make sure that we if we go, if we do go that route. I mean, it's early. I just yeah. think about things and watch the, watch the game too. What, Scott, what tends to be better when you're at home? Um, just the comfort level. We've been playing pretty good basketball at home. Take away the first part of the season. We've had a nice little rhythm at home. It's just it's natural. When you got a young, younger player, they just feel comfortable at home. Everything is very familiar. This is the first time we've played in a very hostile environment. Some of our guys. I, mean, I, I think they did pretty well uh, playing through all that. We didn't play well as a, as a group together. Uh, but we'll be better at home. Looking forward to the challenge of bouncing back and, and, and focusing on just game three. Right. Hey, Scott, um, how do you weigh on a night when Davis is not making his shots? How do you weigh, uh, you know, so much of his value specifically in his shot making? How do you weigh, uh, sending him back out there and kind of waiting for him to break out versus me putting somebody in who can help you in other aspects if he's not making them. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's always uh, got a lot of confidence in him. We need him. We need him to make shots. That's why I left him in there. I thought he was going to maybe knock one in. You know, sometimes in the last minute of a, of a half, you can get a wide open three on some of these two for one situations or why I left them in with three fouls. I was more, I was more worried or more interested in him making a shot than him getting the fourth foul. Um, he needs his shot making. Let's face it, we're, we're we're a better team when he makes shots. I I need to do a better job. Our guard, our playmakers need to do a better job, and he needs to do a better job. We we need to find him more than four shots. And and Scott, game three is that is that a kitchen sink game? Is that just Beal plays 44 minutes and, you know, everything else along those lines? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been, you know, we have to play with urgency. We've, we've had that mentality for a while now. You know, we had it the last two games. It's just last two games, they, they played better than us, much better tonight than the first night. But they played a few possessions better than us in the first game. No matter, no matter what. They beat us twice on their home floor. Um, I'm assuming um, that was their plan. Um, now we have to do what we need to do. We got to focus all of our attention on game three. And yeah, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's never a, a must win unless it's the last possible game, but it's a very, we need to come out with an urgency and, and an edge to us. And I'm confident that we will. Our, our guys, our guys will. We've always we've had we we've always had that belief that we can we can bounce back from a tough situation. Candace. Scott, are the 76ers doing anything to limit Russ's impact the way that he was in the final weeks of the regular season, or are these just two? Kind of bad shooting games for him. I mean, I mean, he got banged up tonight a few times, but been around him enough, and that guy is—he uh, will—he will give everything he has to his team, and he knows—he knows what this time is about, and, and I know what he's about. So he has a couple of days to get his body right and bounce back. You know, he, he got. He got Beat up early in the game, and then, and then a few other times. Um, but I've seen I've seen him bounce back from some very uh, not so good uh, moments where you know you think that he might be out for a couple of weeks. But he's he's tough, and he's not happy that he wasn't able to finish the game. But you know, he's he's a winning basketball player. He he'll get his body right. Hopefully he'll be ready to play uh, Saturday night. And I, like I said, I haven't talked to, to the PR medical. So I don't know really how, how that's going right now. Matt Parks. Hey Scott, um, what can you guys do to get uh, 
better secondary protection from guys that aren't Brad. I can barely hear you. What can you, guys, yeah, what, what can you guys do to get more scoring from guys that aren't Brad? Say it again, I'm sorry. Brad, set up. About, secondary, about secondary scoring, that guys – Yeah, no, we need, we, need, we need everybody to chip in. You know, we need everybody to chip in. We need our three bigs to chip in. We need Ish to chip in. We need everybody that comes in the game to get an opportunity. It's not just about – you know, Brad. Brad has done a great job of putting us on on his back in a lot of times. And Russell has, but when we're really good, everybody's uh, everybody's filling a part, being a part, contributing. And you know, we haven't been able to find that yet. Um, but we got another opportunity Saturday night. Uh, Brad is going to keep bringing his toughness to the team and. All we, we're just focused on one game. I know it's a cliche, but it's, it's, it's important that we just, all of our energy, all of our spirit, our competitive juice has got to just focus on getting every everybody uh, thinking about one game, game three. Olivia. Hey Scott, um, what do you say? I mean, what's your message to these guys to just reset and stay positive after this road trip and get ready to be in front of their own and play at Capital One on Saturday. Yeah, there, it's a, I mean, you know what? Nobody wants to be down 0-2. It stinks. It, there's no, I'm not, I don't sugarcoat anything with our guys. I say, I feel bad. And looking at you guys right now, you feel bad. I like them. Uh, that's why I love it, all those guys. They just, they feel bad. They don't want to be down 0-2. They feel, you know, maybe we could have got one in game one. But now, there's, there's 14 teams wish they would, I mean, no, not all 14. I mean, all 14 wish they would be in this situation right now, being down 0-2, going on your home floor. We got a chance to be in front of our home crowd. How exciting is that? Uh, it's what you play for. We get, we get, we're gonna get, a, we're gonna get some juice from our crowd. They're gonna, they're gonna pump us up, and we're gonna be ready to play. And we gotta play better. There's no question. We gotta play better. A lot of things have to go um, better for us. We don't have to play perfect, but we got to play better. And we've done it many times this year, especially as of late. And now we get another opportunity. I mean, it's still, still you're playing playoff basketball, and it's fun, exciting. And my job is to figure out ways to, you know, for us to get this game. But it's obviously an important one. Last question, Neil. Hey, Scott, you've been kind of saying all season that you've been hoping that, you know, you guys can get a hot stretch from three. That really hasn't been the case. Two of 22 tonight, do you think it's just missing shots entirely or is or the 76ers doing something? What are you seeing? Well, they blocked a, they blocked a bunch of our jump shots. That, that, that hasn't happened. But their, their length and um, ability to contest shots, you know, it, it bothered us at times. Um, we haven't been great, but we haven't been a 9% three-point shooting team. Uh, we're due. We're due. Um, got to step up. Step up, be ready to take those shots. And, you know, I, I thought we had opportunities to continue to drive. And keep, we, had some good, we had some good sets and some good, good moments on the offensive end. But, you know, we, we struggled from the free throw line. We struggled from the three-point line. And that's tough to overcome on the road, but we got a chance to bounce back uh, Saturday night. And that's what we're, that's what it's all about with our group. And we're just going to focus on one game. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Hey, Dallas. Uh, where would you say your uh, struggles came from tonight? Well, I think they're just they're the defense. And really, I think I only got like one pretty good look. The others were, you know, I did a solid job. Of it. Do, do, do you feel, does this feel, I mean, this is your first time in the playoffs with the Wizards, obviously. Does this feel like a, like a different experience coming back, playing the same team or really good defense second time in a row compared to kind of the just the normal schedule slate? 
Chase. Davis, uh, what led to you fouling out uh, out there? Was there a common thread with the fouls that you had? Uh, well, you know, I picked up a couple of fouls, uh, just not money how I get a layup, which is part of the game plan. You know, you'd rather have to shoot free throws and get those and layups. And then, you know, a couple of unfortunate ones, and then, you know, you're in foul trouble, and then, such a goal there, you know. Sometimes uh, there's gonna be a call in some place, sometimes not, and you know, it falls in. That's it. And um, I don't know if you saw it, but um, it, it looked like uh, a, a fan may have thrown some popcorn on on Russell Westbrook as he was leaving the court. Um, just what is your reaction to that that happening to him? Well, my reaction is that it's stupid, and fans in the building they should. Respect the game, you know. We're playing a basketball game. It's our job, our passion, and uh, having fans. Like even if you're passionate, like, you know, I've, I've been in positions where uh, in Europe, some of the things happen, and just uh, think it's unacceptable. And, uh, it's a disgrace. And, uh, you know, there's no place for fans like that in this game. Olivia, do you have a question? Anyone else? All right, Davis. Appreciate you. Uh, first of all, what happened between you and a, a fan there as you were leaving the floor? Uh, first of all, what happened there as you were leaving the floor with uh, that incident with the fan? Uh, unfortunately, you know, I was leaving out and then I just seen you know, popcorn on top of my head. You know, um, and to be honest, man, this shit is in my head, especially for me. Um, just the amount of disrespect, the amount of just fans just doing whatever the fuck they want to do. In the other setting, um, you know, I'm all for the fans enjoying the game and having fun. And it's part of sports. I get it. Uh, but there are certain things that cross the line. Um, and any other setting, I know for a fact that fans, you know, they want to come up and a guy went to the street for a popcorn on my head. Because you know what happened. A guy went to come up to me. Talking about my kids, family, on the street, but it's responsibly different. In these arenas, you got to start protecting the players, man. It, you know, we'll see what the NBA does, but uh, there's a huge problem for us as players. And it's for me, I've been in a lot of incidents where fans, they say whatever. Uh, and the consequences for me are a lot more detrimental uh, than to, to those people in the, in the stands because they feel like they, they're untouchable. Um, they can stay with them when they're there at a sporting event when they can enjoy the game. Um, but a lot of times fans don't realize that's our job. This is my job. This is not some play. This is what I, something I love to do. This is something I love competing at. So to get food thrown on top of me, um, it's just bullshit. Really. Um, and if I Unfortunately, you know, I couldn't get to the stands, but I just don't, I just don't take that lightly, man. I don't, I, you know, it's, to me, it happens to me a lot of times, and you know, obviously, I've, I've learned to put the other way, but to a certain extent, you can't just keep it going away. There has to be some 
penalties or something put in place where fans can't just come to the game to do and say as they please because they wouldn't do that shit anywhere else on the other setting. And I'm sick and tired of it, honestly. And, and you were leaving uh, due to an injury. What can you tell us about how you feel and, and what you heard? Uh, may I be busy? Uh, once again, just my ankle. Twice in a you know, short amount of time. So, you know, we'll see what happens. It's a treatment and hopefully it'll uh, be better. Fred. Hey, Ruff. Um, it's not the first time I've heard you mention that the NBA has to protect the players more. And I'm just curious. I don't know if you've given a thought beyond just, you know, obviously ejecting and banning fans who do stuff like that. But what, what do you think the NBA can do in situations like that in order to make the players safer? I'm not sure. I'm not. I don't make the rules. Nor do I. Um, so I'm not sure. But the rules should be put in place where fans come to the end and know the consequences of, of what could happen. Um, if they are doing certain things or saying certain things that can be, um, you know, disrespectful. Uh, or like tonight, just playing out of pocket. Ava. Trust you guys have been really good all year. Um, in the second half, at coming back and out of tough situations and everything, with a team as physical as Philadelphia, do first halves or do how you guys start the game, especially on defense, almost matter more, or does it not matter any different? No, I mean, it matters. The starting game is important. Uh, you know, we gave a better clock points in the first quarter. Uh, teams like this, they're really good at home. And you know, I'm sure you know how to go. It's tough to beat a team this year, you know, 6%. Outside the game and the halftime. So, you know, it's a series, playoff series, not the first time. Um, being down to go, they, they, they did what they're supposed to do. They took their home court, and now we get a chance to go back in front of our fans and, uh, you know, take one game at a time. And, you know, that's all we can do. Matt Paris. Hey, Russ. Uh, LeBron tweeted about the popcorn incident. He said, by the way, we as players want to see who threw that popcorn on Russ while he was leaving the game tonight with an injury. There's cameras all over the arenas, so there's no excuse. Because if the shoe was on the other foot, I just kind of want, oh, and hashtag protect our players. I was kind of wondering what your reaction was to that. Yeah, I mean, it's what I just said. I mean, you know, I think that players are not surprised. Uh, kind of understands, like, as players, you gotta, you gotta protect it somehow. Somehow that protection has to come somewhere. And, and like I said, any other setting, um, the fans, they wouldn't do nothing like that. Any other thing that's not protecting them from uh, myself going into the stands, or there's no nothing that stopped me from getting to that person, that this wouldn't happen. Um, so the protection of the players is very important. I've been emphasizing this since I've been in the league because for me, uh, you know, I just get a different reaction, obviously, from the crowd for whatever fair reason. Um, so I, uh, you know, I really take this with very, very personal. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm tired of the same thing. And there's, cause to me, I don't really see nothing changing. Things get worse. So. Right. And you guys went months without playing without any fans. So how jarring is it to ha that to happen when you're not used to even just a loud crowd or anything like that? For me, it always happens to me. Something always is just what it is for me, how it goes, um, unfortunately. But like I said, we'll see what happens. Um, obviously, nobody can find a fan. But like Brian said, there's a lot of cameras, a lot of you can find them. You know, if they want to find them, they'll find them. Thank you. Last question of DA. Hey, Russ. I think the fan was ejected. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they said he was ejected from the game. Nah, he ran out. They didn't, they, they didn't get ejected. They ran. They couldn't find him. Okay. All right. Um, had you ever had any problems in Philly before, specifically? Um, yeah. I mean, I had problems here uh, before. Uh, fan. Okay. Uh, took me off early in uh, maybe a couple years ago here. But I don't know, you know, like I said, as players, and obviously if you're a good player and people want to bash you for whatever reason that is, 
I don't mind it. I don't mind that trash talk of me, you know, whether it's Westbrook sucks, Westbrook we can't shoot, Westbrook we can't do that. That's all great. Mm -hmm. Across the line, you start mentioning families, you start mentioning derogatory things, you start to pour popcorn and all that type of shit. Like to me, it's crossing the line, and that's where it has to stop. Like the sports, and the, you know, everybody loves the sport, and oh, you know, screaming, and that's all great. Keep your sports. I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Cross that line, and now I have to I have to you know protect my welfare, protect uh, my family, protect you know you know the, the things that I work for. So, but at the same time, I got to be smart. You know, and it's, that's where the protection has to come in because I can't go into the stands and. You know, because obviously now I will be the one, you know, consequences. So protection has to be at a high, at a high rate, especially with fans coming back into the arena. Um, whether it's the security they hire, whether it's the security when you walk in the tunnel, because you know, at some point, you know, you know as we've seen in years past, at some point, afraid things may happen. You you trying to prevent that, especially in the future. Yeah. Thanks, Russ. Sorry about that, guys. Brad, did you uh, did you see what happened with Russ when he was leaving and uh, the fan threw popcorn on him? I don't know if you were on the court at the time or not. Uh, first person I learned to was Jesus Christ. Uh, I was on the other end. I didn't, I didn't see what happened. Uh, after the game, I heard about it and, uh, and seen the video of it. You know, it's, it's disgusting, um, you know, because us as players, we don't get to protect ourselves. You know, we mm -hmm. run in the stands and confront somebody who is disrespecting us. Like, we're here to entertain everyone in this arena. And, you know, granted, maybe one bad apple or whatever the case may be, but that's still not a good look for the city. For the team and for all fans, like that's be that because we go out and compete on a high level night in and night out, you know, and we put our bodies on the line and we make this this is one of the most entertaining sports in all the sports. And that's surely all it is. And we got a lot of fans. I've even got some crazy anger spoke to me tonight on and my kids are sitting next to me. Yeah. Part of me going over there and say, Who are you talking to? I'm a grown ass man, but we can't do that. So uh, we focus on the game, we control, we control. Uh, but you know, at the end of the day, we got to protect the players. You know, there's a million cameras in here, there's no way we can't find out who did it. Um, and they should never be able to step into the arena nowhere in the US. Um, with regard to the game, how is how is their length impacting this series so far? Uh, I mean they're they're I mean, they're a pretty good team. I mean they're they're very athletic. Uh, they use their size to their advantage. You know they, they want to try to punish teams in the paint. Uh, you know they will always want to try. To, that's where a lot of their offense is generated, great. You know they're able to get in the paint, two feet in the paint. And, uh, once we do that, we're helping a lot. So you know they're able to get you know Danny Green to set pieces. And kick outs and things like that. On uh, the defensive end, they're just long, they're active, you know, they're in passing lanes. Uh, they get a lot of deflections. So, I mean, you took me out on there. I mean, they were one of the best defensive teams during the year for a reason. Uh, but granted, on the flip side of that, we've been one of the best teams that's going scoring on them. Uh, we don't shoot too. So, we just have to, we got to guard better and uh, take care of the ball. Chase. Brad, what are they doing in particular to to make it tough for you guys on the perimeter? Uh, two of twenty-two shooting uh, threes tonight. Uh, I mean, they're I mean, they're just active. They I and me everywhere. They're uh, just sort of rendering the pieces of paper. They're both tired and they're uh, looking for significant margin. So, I mean, I'm not just going to stand there and rise up and shoot over those guys. So. Uh, you know, my thing is just run them, run them off as many pin downs and drills as, many, as much as possible, get some switches and matchups that are more favorable towards me. And, uh, and do that. But, you know, I mean, they just do a good job of, of disrupting us. You know, they, they get us in the mouth first. That's, that's pretty much what they've done on the first two games. And uh, what do you think 
Dobbs needs to do to get going. Uh, he, he, of course, fouled out tonight. And, and... I'll just keep shooting the ball. That's all we want him to do. I don't want to do a damn thing else but shoot the ball. That's what I mean. Candace. Brad, near the end of the first half, it looked like you were kind of flexing your left hand, shaking it off. Um, I was just wondering what happened. I have my funny ball. Matt Paris. Hey, Brad. <clears throat> hey, Brad. <laughs> what can you guys do uh, more, more seconds of scoring from? You know, you've had a nice week. Okay. Uh, what can you guys do to get more secondary support, like from Bacons and Pepper and things like that, to get those guys going a little bit more? I mean, we're, I mean, it was one of those nights for us. I mean, we have guys who can score in bunches, and you know, we got guys who were very versatile with their game, but you know, it just was one of those nights for us. We couldn't make any, definitely make any threes. Uh, I mean, it was, it was, it was a rough for a lot of us. So, uh, and we just we do we do what we do. I mean, on nights like this, we just got to be better on the defensive end, which is going to win us the game. Uh, but I mean, that in that out, it can be nice. I don't know that you know how much aggressive and expressive as I possibly can. Uh, but you know, there's going to be night in and night out. Somebody's different is going to step up for us and be that, that X factor. So we're still searching. Yeah, we got plenty of time left to, to get on, wrap it up and figure it out. Okay, take our home for it. Thank you. Christos. Hey, Brad, what are the takeaways of those two games in uh, in Philly for you as a team? And what do you need to do to be more aggressive on both ends and especially on defense? Uh, I kind of heard what you asked. Uh, I would say our biggest thing is control and control is just like, you know, control our focus, uh, our energy. We can always control our shots, you know, that's as much as how important that is at this stage of the year and in the playoffs, it's like there's no excuse, but uh, we can control how we defend and, and our efforts on that end. That, that's what has to be done um, from everybody, myself and me. So, just... Got to dig ourselves out, man. They, they went up too. That's something that you know we're team is supposed to do. So uh, we know it's our job to take our own court down too. All right, last question, to Neil. Hey, Brad, how do you relay that to the rest of the team, especially the younger guys? That you know, look, we're down 2-0, but we still have an opportunity to you know maybe even this thing up. Uh, I mean, it's tough because nobody, nobody's feeling good. Nobody's, you know, happy with where we are. Everybody wants to win, and everybody's playing hard. But, you know, it's, it's definitely tough for the other guys because they've never you know, been in this position, in this situation. Uh, you know, it's best all we do is, you know, just continue to encourage everybody and stay engaged. You know, it's, it's very easy to just kind of distance yourselves, kind of give in, throw on the towel. But, you know, this is a long series. Anything can happen. So, uh, it's just staying, taking in a game at a time. What's happened is happening. You can't tell the future. You know, we can worry about it the next day. Tomorrow, we just got to be better with film, be better in, uh, than where we were tonight. You know, go back and see where we can better on both ends of the floor. And uh, I have no idea we'll play again, but be ready you know, Saturday or Sunday, whenever that may be. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it just got to continue to be a leader on the floor and off the floor. I mean, continue, like I said, encourage guys, and obviously, you have to continue from my foot forward and my performance too. All right, thanks, Brad. Yeah.